Hi everyone and uh, welcome to the next instalment of my build of Dragons M3A1 in 135th scale. As you can see from this uh, short video, uh, the cab has now been completed um, using the uh, Voyager PE set uh, along with the Panzer Art uh, resin stowage set and a little bit of uh, bits and bobs for myself. So if this is something that you're interested in, then please feel free to pull up a chair, grab a brew, and let's go do some modeling. So first off, these were the actual kit doors. Um, very nice, uh, nicely detailed, very crisp, um, but uh, lacked a little bit of detail here and there. Um, so I was more than happy to use the Voyager PE set. Uh, early doors, I decided to have one of the doors folded downwards, uh, just to add a little bit of interest in detail. And as you can see, with it in place, the uh, hinges on the kit part were out of line. So those had to be taken off and redone. Now, the hinges on the PE set, very small and fiddly. Um, took a little bit of time uh, to get used to doing these particular ones. Uh, but basically, I used a 5mm uh, rod uh, to bend them over the width. And then I actually finished them off using a 0.3mm uh, styrene rod. And uh, in fact, these once glued in became movable. Um, so I was really pleased uh, with how that had finished. These are some of the small parts uh, detailed on the actual uh, door itself. Uh, very fiddly in places. Um, so I had to be very careful not to uh, lose these to the carpet monster. Uh, but fortunately, I had no issues there at all. The actual uh, PE set from Voyager does actually come with 0 0.5 and 0.3 mil styrene rod, which was very handy. I uh, wasn't happy with the PE uh, handles, so I made my own ones out of 0.5mm wire. And what, those were added on each side. Very pleased with uh, how they turned out. And as you can see from this short clip, even though I was going to be sticking this uh, to the bodywork, it does actually, the hinges do actually work and you can uh, open and shut it as you wish to. So all in all, uh, that side of the door turned out really well. Now these are the very small handles that had to go in on the door as well. Had to drill out the uh, PE holes just a little bit for them to fit. But once done, they looked uh, really nice and accurate, which I was surprised at. So pleased with that. So moving on to the um, front uh, mud guards, uh, those were glued into place. And I started doing some test fitting with the um, Panzer Art Stowage Kit. Now, bear in mind, these are designed for the Scout car. So they did need a bit of adjusting uh, to fit onto the um, mud guards. Also, there's a little bit of gap. So you can actually see the hatches uh, that open up the bonnet. So I took off the uh, plastic ones and made these PE set ones. And you can see that in a little bit more detail there. Uh, really pleased with how those uh, turned out. And there, with the uh, stowage set in place, these, uh, because they're resin, uh, these need to be glued in using CA glue. And then I just went around with a little bit of filler uh, just to make it uh, seal a lot better. And this now we're looking on the other side, the right-hand side. That's a fair amount of stowage there, but that fitted in okay, except for the petrol can. So that had to be trimmed back just a little bit, but uh, pleased with how that turned out. Just want to have a quick chat about the PE set from Voyager. Unbelievable, superb, very detailed, very nice. However, when you're doing a PE set, you don't have to use it all. There are times when it's just not needed. So, for example, this particular plastic piece from the kit, nicely detailed, no issues at all. And I can't see the point in going to all the trouble of either having to weld or to glue the PE box together to come up with the same result. So here, they just needed to uh, put uh, some rivets on. And as you can see here, if you were to use the PE set, you have to do all of the rivets. So to me, it was a no-brainer. Leave the PE part alone, use the plastic part, and just add a bit of detail onto the plastic part uh, using my own pewter rivets. And you'll find that throughout most of my builds, what I aim to do is to add detail to the plastic part rather than scrapping the plastic part altogether. So that's what I like to do with my PE. Now, as far as the axe goes, um, I'm using the PE set here. So I had to take out a, an axe from the spares drawer, save me having to trim back all of the kit part. 
and on the other side you have a shovel and a pickaxe so it's a matter of taking off the handles and the holder from the plastic part and then adding on the uh, PE parts in replacement so this was the actual uh, shovel part no issues here at all went together nicely as far as the pickaxe goes if you can remember the uh, petrol can holder on the kit is a solid piece of plastic so they only had half a pickaxe so i actually had to put the full pickaxe from the spares drawer because there's now a gap up between that petrol holder this is me trying to thread through the um belts from the pe set beautifully detailed really like these a lot and then once in place with a bit of ca glue i was really pleased with how that side had turned out not looking forward to painting it but it's all in place now, as you can see here with the lights, it was a little bit difficult to squeeze it in um, around the stowage set. So I actually had to uh, make quite a large gap in the stowage set, which meant once the light had gone in, it had to be filled. So I just used some uh, milliput. Um, as you can see, put it in a haphazardly, making sure the hole was fully um, repaired. And then it was a matter of just going over with the craft, uh, nice and sculpting knives and just wetting that down until I was happy with the way that looked. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that all paints up. Now for the underside, I'm doing some pre-mud work um, using the Mr. Surfacer 500. You see me do this a hundred times and there's lots of videos on um, YouTube all about it. But just to give you a, a rough idea of how I do it, I like to put my Mr. Surfacer in a cap because otherwise if you leave your bottle open it will just dry out uh, this bottle's been going for nearly two years now and as you can see still don't need to use any thinner to mix it up so away we go with the uh, cut down brushes first of all i i use the uh, shorter stipple just to cover all of the area and then when that starts to go off when you start to feel a little bit tacky then i go over with the short uh, the longer bristle and that gives you that sort of spiky look and then once the spiky uh, look has hardened then it's a matter of getting your um, sandpaper in there and sanding it smooth and you get this wonderful effect that looks like dried mud um, so that was really pleased with how that went so with the front of the cab done we're now looking at the back end um, this is the again the resin uh, stowage that goes above the actual windscreen and i used the pe set um, from voyager because most of it was covered up um, from the um, uh, resin part big mistake I made here is that I didn't mask the window so they're going to need a bit of a clean up later on but no issues really and these are with the little uh, wiper blades in place and with the bonnet put on it was really looking the part again the PE set parts are very small indeed but worth doing so these are the actual brackets to hold up the uh, windscreen visor using 0.3 mil rod there and that was with all three in place very fiddly but well worth it because of the added detail and realism now the actual uh, part to hold on to the um, guard that goes above the windscreen uh, this caused me no end of problems um, combination of me being stupid and the dragon instructions uh, but we managed to get there in the end the actual guard itself, the rail for the um, machine gun, um, again, you could use the PE set. I was more than happy to use the um, plastic part from the kit. And as you can see, I just embellished it with all of the PE parts. So with all the brackets, the handles, and some rivets as well. Now, I like to use the old style Tamiya cement. I'll keep this in the corner of the model room because this stuff goes off like anything. It is rock hard and this guard needed to be welded in place so i'll use that for that but as you can see i've had to trim a lot of the resin stowage back to fit that in so because of that i did have quite a large gap in between the two but not an issue because we can get that filled so this is where i was at this particular stage really pleased with how things were going so let's have a little recap of all of the pe parts there's that um, belt and the handles for the pickaxe. A couple of more details had to go onto this door, but because they're fiddly, I like to leave that right to the end, just in case they get broken off while I'm still handling the cab. 
There's that filler I talked about. That's now all in place along the top and along the bottom. The lights are in place as well. On the front grill, there is an option where you can have it open, but I've got far too much on my plate with this build and I didn't want to have that hassle. So I went for the closed option here. Underneath, uh, once the mud work had been done, I added a few more embellishments, just a little bit of detailing uh, with the uh, Meng nuts and some of the PE set. A couple of um, rivets there were missing, uh, so they had to be added. And this is the uh, sculpting work that I did with the milliput. And as you can see, I've put in some 0.3 mil fuse wire there uh, for the uh, light headlight uh, wiring as a bit of detail. So all in all, coming along well. And there's that box that we mentioned earlier, and also the pickaxe with the PE parts. Again, there's another little belt there as well. Nice, nice detail. Really pleased with the Voyager set. This part here, a little bit crude, but that's going to be covered up with muds and not really fussed. As always, steering wheel's fallen off, but that'll be put on later on along with this, the seats. And we have a little handle here, which is the grab handle to control the front grille. That will be put on later as well. And some interior detailing here. So now then we need to tackle this uh, issue uh, with the uh, gap in between the machine gun holder and the resin storage here. It's just really going to be a matter of using some uh, green stuff um, because uh, in real life these had canopies that went over the top. So it's just a matter of, uh, of rolling that all up and, and, and making that detailing. But what I wanted to try and do is because obviously I've gone to a lot of effort with all this detailing. I don't want to get it all covered up. And I wanted to make sure that a lot of it was still in place. So, moving on, we're going to use the old green stuff again. You've, you've seen me use this. Um, I'm a big fan of the green stuff. I've tried everything else, uh, from milliput to tissue to, to whatever. Um, but the green stuff for tarpaulins, for me, is the best way, thing to use. So, just uh, cut off the strip. Give it a good um, mix-up. Um, I like to use gloves um, so you don't see any fingerprints. And then we're just going to use the rolling pin. The reason for the talcum powder is so that it doesn't stick. And this is the sort of thickness that you're after to create the uh, tarp with. And then using your PE bending tool, um, you can just cut it to shape. Now, I obviously measured the model, so I knew exactly what size tarp I needed. Now this particular tarp does have lots of uh, ties, etc. So with the spare parts, um, I just uh, sliced through and made quite a few um, handles, straps, whatever you like, for use later on with the build. So those straps were put in place um, using a little bit of water to try and keep them in place, but it, as you can see, it didn't it didn't really want to stay there, but we got there in the end. Then using the cocktail stick very carefully, you have to fold and wrap the uh, tarp into a long tube. Again, still plenty of talcum powder so that it doesn't stick. And then take the toothpick out, give it a couple of twists here and there, just to add a, a, a little bit of realism. Try not to flatten it down too much at this stage. And then once it's been put in place, um, then we need to get a slightly damp uh, brush and then start pressing it down, pushing it into the grooves so that you can actually see the uh, detail from the stowage underneath coming through because that's the effect that you're after. And then very carefully with the sculpting tool, it was pushed down in place. 
You can also see those straps hanging out. Uh, they'll be tied down. And what you need to do is go around with your sculpting tool and just add, add in some fold lines and, and really just press it all down in place. Now, with you using the water, this will actually help bond uh, the green stuff to the resin and plastic parts. And then finally, uh, the, the water will also clean off any residue talc as well. And then just basically leave that to set overnight and in the morning that will be rock hard. Now, just to finish off now, we have the door on the other side. Um, again, similar detailing and this will actually be left open. So that's why it's off the model at the moment. So what I'm going to do is just leave you with some final close-up photos. Um, the stage I'm at now is that I'm now moving on to the rear end um, and lots of having lots of fun with the stowage and detailing on that. So we'll have a look at that uh, in the next video. But in the meantime, I'd just like to say thank you very much indeed for popping in and having a look. Massive thank you to all of my subscribers and your continued support. And happy modelling.